the week. My name is Lissa Lander, and I'm the Religious Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Since we are learning about the Unitarian Church's roots in Transylvania this week, I thought, what better time than now to talk about my favorite UUs? They come as a bit of a set, but we're going to focus on Francis David, who was the founder of the Unitarian Church in Transylvania. Francis David was born in 1520 and was raised a Catholic, but as an adult, he went on a bit of a spiritual quest, later joining the Lutheran wing of the Reformation in 1542. Then in 1559, he entered the Reformed Church where he was elected Bishop of the Hungarian Churches in Transylvania. And he was also appointed court preacher to the Prince of Transylvania at the time. The Prince allowed him to research in the Royal Library and to work in the Royal Court on his theological thesis. During these studies, Francis David concluded that there was no scriptural basis for the Trinity. Whew. Influenced by the anti-Trinitarian and humanist views of Michael Servetus and Giovanni Valentino Gentile, Francis David wrote extensively about the flaws in Trinitarian beliefs, thus founding the Unitarian Church in Transylvania. He even went so far as to say it was not necessary to invoke the name of Jesus Christ in prayer. Talk about a religious dissenter, guys. Francis David eventually became the religious advisor to King John Sigismund II. But who is that, you might ask? So, once upon a time in Hungary, <laughs> Queen Isabella, gave birth to a young prince in 1540. Two weeks later, the king died while away fighting a religious war, never having met his son. The new baby became King John Sigismund II, but he was a baby, so Queen Isabella ruled in his place until he got older. Now this is all important to us because the people of Hungary were at war over what religion everyone should be. Isabella moved the young king to a faraway corner of the kingdom in Transylvania to try to escape the violence. It was there that she raised her son to be tolerant and charged him with stopping the religious wars. Sadly, Queen Isabella died when King Sigismund was only 19 years old. But remembering his promise to his mother to stop the religious war, Sigismund set to work bringing Francis David in as his advisor. Rather than issuing a royal decree that everyone had to be the same religion as the king, like so many other kings had done, King Sigismund honored what his mother had taught him and decided that representatives from the various religions should all come together and talk about their differences. So, a Calvinist, a Catholic, a Lutheran, a Greek Orthodox Christian, and a Unitarian all walked into a bar. Just kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. They walked into the king's court and spoke about their ideas for years. In the end, the king liked what Francis David, the Unitarian, had to say so much that he became the first and only Unitarian king in the year 1568. King John Sigismund issued the Edict of Torda, which was the first legal decree for religious tolerance. It said, In every place the preachers shall preach and explain the gospel, each according to his understanding of it, and if the congregation like it well. If not, no one shall compel them, for their souls would not be satisfied, but they shall be permitted to keep a preacher whose teachings they approve. No one shall be reviled for his religion by anyone, and it is not permitted that anyone should threaten anyone else by imprisonment, for faith is the gift of God. After King Sigismund's tragic and untimely death in a carriage accident, 
His court preacher, Francis David, was charged with heresy, which means belief or opinion contrary to orthodox, religious, and especially Christian doctrines. Istvan Bathory <laughs> became king in Sigismund's place, and he was a Roman Catholic and decreed that the new religious institutions that his predecessor's tolerance had inspired should all be persecuted. Francis David was sentenced to life in prison, which is where he later died in 1579. They found these words written on the walls of his prison cell. Quote, we need not think alike to love alike. So wise. And guys, that's the best story. Am I right? <laughs> um, to learn more about fascinating UUs, go to uuoftheweek.org and be sure to join us again next time on Reimagining Chapel.